ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first game of Team Empire vs Double Dimension. This is going to be the upper bracket finals, I do believe. Let's take a look at the quick schedule. Yep, this is the upper bracket finals of the Galaxy Battle Group B qualifiers between Team Empire and Double Dimension. I'm going to be your caster, Robin Roll. It's going to be the Undyne and the Enchantress first bands. Um, Double I mentioned taking the series 2 0 yesterday against M19 and Team Empire wiping Whites, who we just saw got knocked out, unfortunately, in the last round. Yesterday, 2 0 as well. So, both teams. Remaining. Looking to be pushing through. And I, uh... Team Empire's turn to pick. Yeah, so it's going to be the Earth Spirit as well as the Beastmaster ban, the Brewmaster and the Bane ban on the side of Team Empire. They pick up the Winter Wyvern, which we did see last match and the match before. When Whites decided they were done 15 minutes into the game, which, you know, to be fair to them, if they didn't see a chance to come back, they'd rather not waste the time. They just decided to uh, GG out. So the Shadow Demon picked up by Double Dimension, they've got themselves the second pick as well. Are they going to go straight into the... Okay, so it's going to be the Shadow Demon Marana Clockwork combo. Unless Empire want to draft the Marana themselves, maybe ban it out in the next phase. But that is something that we did see yesterday from Double Dimension. They ran the Shadow Demon Clockwork as Roman supports. Marana in the uh, second position in that mid lane. An Empire pick up the Sand King. Okay, yeah, he can burrow strike away from the cogs if he gets trapped in from the clockwork. He's got the epicenter to dive in and do damage while the clockwork's trapped. Team Empire's turn uh, to Wyvern again can throw that Winter's Curse down if the clockwork gets too close or is paired up with the rest of his team. I'm gonna throw it on anyone as long as they're paired up with the rest of the team. It's gonna be the Nature's Profit ban from Double Dimension, not wanting that split push to come out from Team Empire. Empire, what are they gonna ban next? They ban the Marana. So actually making sure that Double Dimension can't get that full combo off. Taking a look at the games yesterday, they did play the Medusa, who is still the. If that's a hero they want to be picking up. Five seconds remaining. They had Silent on the PA as well. I uh, picked up a Gyrocopter. So I wonder what Empire want to be going for. They've got two minutes left, just using it now on this. Last ban of this phase. Dire team pick. The ban out the Viper. Again, really strong hero at the minute. No one really wanted to be playing up against that. Um, so, Empire decide that it's not worth it. They don't want to even give it up to Double I mentioned. They just want to ban it out. Maybe looking for another PA mid. It's going to be the puck on the mid lane, so that's going to be the potentially the 4, 5, and 2 position picked up already by Double Dimension. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So 
So, the bat is going to be ban out. Um, Empire taking the time over this third pick again. It looks like they've got the position four and five locked down with the Wyvern and the Sand King. They picked themselves up the Weaver. Yeah, it means he's going to be able to time lapse himself away to safety if he gets caught in those cogs. Good survivability with the Sakuchi as well. Can do a lot of physical damage with the swarm as well as that germinate attack. Five seconds remaining. So, double dimension. Again, it looks like it is the. Okay. Good Romy hero, whether you play this as the position 3 or the position 4. Really strong with the mana burn. Um, just being able to sneak up onto heroes, do a lot of right click damage. Got a decent stun. So, double dimension needs to be... Five seconds um, good on the rotations with the Shadow Demon Clockwork and maybe the next Assassin now as well. Could potentially run the Clockwork as 3, the Nyx Assassin as a 4, the Shadow Demon as a 5, and have the Nyx and the Shadow Demon rotate into the Clockwork's lane. I wonder if DD are gonna go for the Luna. Um, Anti Mage as well, still in the good with the Shadow Demon. Anyone that's got any sort of reliance onto Illusion Heroes. Empire pick up the TA. That's... She's really strong in the minute with these traps that deal the damage. Can get a bonus 200 damage from the, the talent as well. I do believe so. Five seconds remaining. Empire and DD, they've got one Baron left each. Weaver should be the pause one. We've got the Templar Assassin in the mid lane. Maybe the four and five with the Sand King and Winter Wyvern. Meanwhile, on the side of Double Dimension, it's going to be the Shadow Demon on that fifth position. Clock or Nyx on the fourth. And the other on the third. They ban out the Drow. Oh yeah, that would have actually been a really strong. You put Weaver in the off lane. You've got Templar Assassin mid, Sand King, Winter Wyvern, Roman Sports. And the Drow Ranger for the extra damage. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So, Empire, what are they going to ban last? What do they think DD are going to be picking up? Um, they ban out. Okay, they. Yeah. That's a decent hero. Again, goes great with the illusions of the Shadow Demon. It looks like the Luna is still there. If that's something DD want to be going towards. But with the invis of three heroes um, to dodge out the eclipses, the loosen beams as well, they do need to be on point with those dusts, the sentry wards. To Empire taking the time now, potentially over the offlane, although the Weaver can be running that position three. It does offer again a lot of survivability with the Sakuchi. Um, could be prone to being locked down with the clockwork if you can get the cogs, um, if it is a position four clockwork. With the disruption into the cogs, it means that Weaver, even though his Invis can't really get himself out of the cogs, it's going to be the Tide Hunter. Okay, so that is going to be the pause three Tide Hunter. The Weaver in the safe lane, you've got the Templar Assassin in the mid, Sand King and Winter Wyvern going to be on that four and five respectively. Meanwhile, on the side of Double Dimension, they've got themselves just over a minute and 40 seconds to think about this final pickup.
and it's really flexible on the double dimension draft. You can run the puck in the next assassin in the mid lane or the off lane if that's where you want to run the next assassin clockwork can be either the four or the three. But it looks like this is definitely going to be the pause one coming out now from double dimension just over just over a minute now. And again, just something that pairs with the shadow demon you've got. Well, you've got the Faceless Void, if he goes for that Diffusal Blade, you've got the Anti-Mage anyway for the Mana Burn, you've got the Luna, who's still in there. Could even go for something like a PL, which I do believe is still in the draft. An extremely strong hero still. But going to be using a lot of reserve time for this. I've used just over a minute. Went towards a minute and 20 seconds now. I've got 19 seconds left to really discuss this. Medusa is still available. Yep, still got the Medusa. Again, the Luna. Bursa, maybe, if you want to go man mode fights. So it is going to be the Medusa, okay. So it's going to be, and again, pardon me for the pronunciation, I forget anything wrong. It's going to be Ajixius on the Shadow Demon as a stand-in. We've got Ekna on the Clockwork, DD on the Shock on the Poke. We've got Flo on the Nyx and Regix on the Medusa. Meanwhile, on the side of Team Empire, it's going to be Vansko on the Winter Wyvern, we've got Maposhka on the Sand King, Silent on the Weaver, FN on the Templar Assassin, and Yoki on the Tidehunter. So let's get ourselves into the first game of this best of three between Team Empire and Double Dimension for a place in the winner's bracket. In fact, I think it's actually the group grand finals. Yeah, this will be the upper bracket finals now. We're going to be getting ourselves into this and then the winners go through into the group grand finals to play up on the main stage. So I went spotted out instantly, Sakuchi's away, the good luck's coming out as well. But Shadow Demon, already got that disruption available. Seconds to battle. And this is something that we've been seeing all day um, between White and M19. Both teams look for the invade, look to secure a rune. And just give the other one up. The Arctic Burn comes out, Eknot going to be taking a little bit of harass and Flo chased away now as well, the right clicks, the Sakuchi again up for silent so he can try and do as much damage as possible maybe to Flo and then run himself away if he gets in too much trouble, runs himself in with the Sakuchi actually with the cogs getting dropped and the rune picked up by Undershock. Yeah it looks like Yoki just moves himself back, meanwhile back in the river Maposh coming across Eckhart. To a fan. Sitting in the mid lane up against the puck. He's got himself two shirt tango. He's got a support sand king. I think Aknaut was spotted out there. Yeah, spotted out by that river rune. Uh, river ward, even sorry. A 
looking for the denies on the creeps, trying to make it hard for the puck. Now Agnark's coming in, does have the cogs, but there's going to be a burrow strike there. Does FN try and dodge? Just, just sits in the middle of the creep wave, just trying to get as many right clicks as possible. The orb comes through now, does a little bit of damage. And now Akna is going to be able to get himself away. There's another Burrow Strike if the Sanguine wants to go for it, but the cogs are dropped and now the mana's gone. Meanwhile, on the bot, Vansko coming in. He's not got the Arctic Burn for the next 14 seconds, and Float takes a little bit of Faras. Again, back in the mid lane. This is just going to be a double lane. Both teams wanting to secure this for their heroes. <laughs> the cog's being dropped just to make sure it's an utter inconvenience for the Sanking as well as the TA. So Yoki, just trying to re really chase down the um, Shadow Demon trade, the right clicks. Speaking of trading right clicks, Flo's doing it as well. Vansko can turn it around. He's just used the Arctic Burn once again. Not good enough mana for the Splinter Blast. And it looks like Vansko wants to get himself up there to pick up a rune. Going to be chased down by Flo. There's going to be the Impale as well. And Vansko not going to be able to pick that one up. But it does mean he's going to be able to get the other one across the river. I think it's the first look goes away. I have the clockwork in the mid lane. Sorry, I got too wrapped up in the chase. <laughs> the pings. So Agna, yeah, he keeps being spotted out by this ward. Not sure he knows it's there. But Puck taking a slight, slight net worth lead over the Templar Assassin. Top lane though, Agnats rotating in, Yoki's pretty low already so the battery result's going to be coming out, Yoki just just too fast for the body blocks to come out now from the Medusa and he can look to chase it down, the Mystic Snake goes and looks like Yoki is going to be going down as so Rajix picks up the second kill of the game. Taking a bit of for us from this Arctic Burn. Mid lane Puck just going to be dodging out the right clicks coming out from FN. And now just jumps himself with the orb back into the mid lane. Agnar rotating through the Sand King. Maposhka there to help protect him. So, FN, there's going to be the orb flying through and Puck taking a lot of for us. Meanwhile, again, Vanscor just trading with Flo. As the Arctic Burn comes out once again, Yoki trying to chase down the Shadow Demon gets the Anchor Smash off and actually, Shadow Demon getting pretty low. If you can get the Gush off, you could potentially find the kill. <laughs> Being chased around the trees, the anchor smash comes in, he does find the kill. The battery still, Agna is going to be able to chase down in the 345's moves from speed on Yoki. Meanwhile, Clockwork has the 405, so Yoki, is he going to try and deny himself to the creeps, waking them up now? Maybe just looking for the body blocks as the cogs do come out. Yoki being locked down, tries to get himself away, but Medusa coming in now as well. Mystic Snake flies through, should be enough. <gasps> One more right click. Agna is going to be able to catch up, 380 movement speed. A weaver trying to do what he can on the bot lane. Net worth, he is top 2.7k. Zegna does get a deep ward down in the radiant jungle. Spots up Maposhka, though. Vanska's gonna be there. The battery salt coming out, trying to chase him down. The Burrow Strike does come through in the stand storm. It's got two points, so Eka is gonna be able to get himself away. Burrow Strike in five cogs come out.
treasures. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Go for me. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I'll take your tribute. A prize. Dyer's top tower is under attack. A wyvern's breath. middle tower is under attack. Jesus. 
Co Bansko? Yeah, Maposhka moves himself up with the Sandstorm. He's got level 3 on that. He's got enough gold for the Blink Dagger now as well. Picks that one up. And Vansko. He's got his level 6 now, so that Winter's Curse is available for another fight that happens like that. FN. Got himself the Desolator building towards the Blink. Is there going to be a fight coming out? The Dream comes out onto an illusion, actually. So Wondershock got goofed as Flo with the Vendetta looking for um, a little bit of Faras, looking to find what he can. Advanced Core, the, this is going to be the real one, they know it's the real one. And that's going to be the Impale, it's going to be off the mark, the orb comes through, but Vansko should be able to get himself away, Zagna moves himself in with the Cogs, FN's got the Refraction Charges up, the Reckless coming out, and there's going to be the Winter's Curse as the Epicenter comes through, just a little bit off the mark. Now FN, the Reckless coming out, Shadow Demon going to be able to get himself nothing but dead. As Undershock has TP'd himself to the bot lane as Silent pushes in this tier 1 tower. So Yoki, trying to do whatever he can for this T1 tower to go down. It looks like he is going to be able to secure that. Agnat moves in, but it's not going to be in time. Does have the hook if you want to try and make a move onto Yoki, but Yoki just moves himself back. He is really damn tanky. 8 armor, 1300 health, and about 300 away from the blink. Not, not going to be able to do anything about this, really. As Titan just needs this one more stack for his blink. FN. Pretty close to his blink as well. If you take a look at the side of the dire though, item-wise. Undershock's got his blink dagger. The urns out on Ekna. Ragex. Is he going straight towards the Manta? No, it looks like it's going to be this Guardi coming up first. As he does have one ultimate up. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So the push coming in the split shot as well. But there's gonna be the bottom strike, the blink forward by FN showing that in the mana shield. It might be enough with the stone gaze, but the winter's curse comes out just to slow the Medusa down, and now the trap charging up as well is gonna be slowed down. The Octa Burn comes out. There's gonna be the Titans to jumping in with the gush, slowing Rage Extend, but it's gonna be a three-man dream coil. The takedown. The Medusa, and now the Shadow Demon, one right click from FN is enough damage to take this Weaver down. The Ravage comes out, Puck phase shifts it up, but I don't think the Nyx is going to be so lucky. Meanwhile, the back lines, it's going to be the Cold Embrace of Vansko, keeping himself healthy. The Cogs are dropped Techno. The chase is on FN. Is he going to be able to blink himself as Yoki can't get the four star forward? The blink comes up onto the high ground, and FN does secure that kill. So, four heroes down on the side of DD. And Undershock needs to move himself away. <laughs> Yoki even throwing out the taunt during Undershock to come forward with the fortification being used for this tier 2 tower empire. Pretty low on mana, Tidehunter. Fantasco's getting back up the. Yeah, FM blinks away. Puck actually gets the, the deny. Silent, building towards the Diffusal Blade, got himself the Dragon Lance already, only about, what's that, 450, 700, so he's about... Arcane. He's about 400 gold, 300 gold now away from finishing this, meanwhile, fight in the Dire Jungle, it's going to be Mimposh getting pretty low, there's going to be the Cold Embrace, I think they're going to be able to finish this off with the Splinter Blast coming through onto the Shadow Demon, he's trying to get himself away, but he's got no mana for the Borrow Strike. Now the Dream Call used just on Vansko, this is Chase going to come through the hook from downtown. Vansko getting pretty low, one more right click from Undershock. Does secure the kill, Tidehunter, no Ravage, and now he's being targeted down. The Cogs come out, right clicks flows there as well, he's not got the Impale for the next 7 seconds, so Yoki just going to stand there and ex accept his fate it looks like as the Dust comes out. Silence nowhere near, so Silent chases away, the Impale's going to be there to slow him down. Dyer's 
And surprisingly, the Tidehunter does get himself back safely, but Silent's still in the mid lane trying to do whatever he can. Just to delay the kill, I guess, onto the Tide Hunter, back him up as soon as possible. Now the Diffusal Blade does come out. Once again, Dire Jungle, Maposhka. Bounce Cut spotted by Flo in the Vendetta. Do they see the Sand King? They do see the Sand King. Right click, the Impale is going to hit this time. And now with the Puck jumping in, three heroes, Eknot cleans it up with the Iron Charge. And the instant smoke, Roshan being flirted out. Is there going to be a hook? Eknot gets it onto the Weaver. Weaver does have the time lapse. I do believe he's going to be smoked. Uses the Cold Embrace, actually cancels it off. That could be disastrous as Ragex takes him down. It looks like with that Mystic Snake and now FN Stonegate is going to be coming out. The Winter Wyvern going to be taken down. The Ravage comes out, takes down the Shadow Demon. And Eknar getting low. FN tries to run himself away, but he's going to be silenced. One more right click, it should be enough. I would not want to be the Winter Wyvern now after throwing the Cold Embrace onto the Weaver just before he could get that time lapse off. Mistakes were made. Epicenter being channeled. The Blink Burrow Strike comes through. They're going to be able to take down Ekna and Undershot get him pretty low as well. Can they take him down with a silence? Four step forward coming through from the Titan under the phase shift. So, Yoki. Yeah, are they going to be able to steal the Roshan here? No, it just goes the way of the Medusa. But Empire give it a try. And with the Winter's Curse. Vanskar gets the kill and now the slow into Ragex. They may be able to pop this Aegis as soon as it comes up. Flow getting pretty low. The Impale's going to be there onto the Titan. The right click from the split shot of the Medusa with the Mask of Madness trying to take Yoki down. Ragex running himself away, but it might not be here enough. The Force Staff comes forward and that's going to be the Aegis pop Flow. Now being chased down. A gush. Anything. Yeah, the right click's finishing him off from the Weaver and now it's going to be Ragex's turn. There's going to be a Burrow Strike through from Maposhka and Yoki just running themselves away. Sound going to be chasing down by Vanskar. Everybody on the side of Empire pretty low as the TA not even going to be there for the fight. So Silent still trying to take down Ragex. Eknot coming in with a battery assault, but it's not going to be enough as Silent may even try and turn this with the time lapse. And TA solo pushing up the top lane. A golden thread. We've a building towards the BKB now, not even going for. Yeah, not even going to go for the Lincoln Sphere, just going straight for the BKB. Don't mind if I do. FN. About 150 gold away from being able to have the full... Did he finish off the Hurricane Pike? Yeah, he's already got the four stuff, so that's going to be a Hurricane Pike 20 minutes in with a Blink Dagger and a Diffusal Blade as well. Okay, and the Burrow Strike comes through, right clicks one more, he pops the Spike Carapace, but there's going to be the Dust, yeah, FN picks that one up easy. And now Maposhka on the chase, blinks forward, gets the Burrow Strike, SD in a bit of trouble, the right clicks coming through. It's going to be the Disruption onto FN, so he can't finish this off just yet, but the Winter's Curse, keeping the SD in place, and FN just waits, the hook comes in. Keeping FN in control, Maposhka does finish off the SD now, Maposhka can get him pretty low, the Cold Embrace does come out now. Ekna, what's he going to be able to do with the Stone Gaze? It looks like the Winter Wyvern, <laughs> once again, leaving his ally in a bit of a, a bad position with that Cold Embrace. The Ravage comes off the face shift from the puck, it's not going to matter. One more right click up the hill. An Undershock, Burley gets himself away, Empire, Yoki taunting the, the Medusa. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Silent once again split pushing, takes down the tier 2 tower on the bot lane. So, 22 minutes in, 
19 to 15, 8k net worth advantage, go in the way vampire. Spike Carapace pops onto Vanscore, could be in trouble with the sounds coming out from Undershock, those are going to be the impalers, go ahead. <laughs> Eggnut decides, you know what, he wants that kill. Throws out the rocket floor and cleans it up. Bragic, Mystic Snake, but there's going to be a Sakuchi away from Silent. Which opens up this top lane, FN though with Maposhka looking to put pressure onto the tier 2 tower top lane. So Templar Assassin sitting and just right clicking down on this tier 2, 3 heroes coming up, 4 heroes coming up from the side of double dimension but Maposhka in the trees gets to blink away. An FN hook! Well, close only counts and horseshoes and hand grenades and Ekna couldn't get the follow up onto the TA. He was silent. It looks like Empire just content with pulling. The silence comes out. There's going to be the Dream Call as well. It looks like they want to try and go on silent here. There's going to be the Spike Carapace from the Sakuchi. The Stone Gates comes out and Ragex picks up that kill with the Mystic Snake. But mid lane, the blink comes forward. Ekna in a bit of trouble pops the Blade Mail. The right clicks and FN doesn't even curve. Pops the Refraction and bursts down the Clockwork. Yeah, so Empire being content. And this illusion's up for the next 40 seconds because it's from the Shadow Demon. Um, but Empire content just to push and pull double dimension all across the map. You know, you push the top lane back up, push the bot lane back up. And it just keeps them guessing. It was unlucky that Silent got caught out though. And again, if we take a look at the items now. Medusa. Got herself the Skadi, the Asher. Mask of Madness, Undershock, Lincoln's Blink Dagger, Hand of Midas coming out for Flow, maybe moves towards the Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what he's got queued up. Speaking of, in the jungle, the Dream Call is used just for Maposhka. There's going to be the Sandstorm, but the Spike Carapace cancels that off. The Orb flies through an Undershock. So silent. Gonna be going towards a hurricane pike of his own. It looks like they want to chase when the Medusa, the Mystic Snake, bounces through onto Vanskor, flows there in the vendetta form. Oh, the Sakuchi isn't gonna wear off just in time. Flow moves back, right click. It's not gonna be enough. The impale hits, but the Sakuchi keeps silent safe for now. The orb comes through. There's gonna be the mana burn. I flow the fusel blade just to keep flow from running in either direction, really. Both teams stacking up for the fight. The Vendetta used from the Nyx Assassin once again. Sakuchi comes in. Ragex being used as bait. Does he have the Stone Gaze? He does. There's going to be the Ravage. And everybody turns away. Ragex is pretty low. Meanwhile, backlines. The BKB is going to pop. One more right click is enough to finish off flow. And the Spike Carapace not going to save him. Ragex is going to be able to get himself away. His FN's on a double kill. The Looks like it's going to be at least four heroes going down. Could be five if they can find Undershock. Doesn't have a TP for the next... 12 seconds, is there a scan available? Scan is available, but you know, Empire decide, you know what, we'll just push up this bot lane. No Shadow Demon for 23, no Clockwork for 30. Medusa's though does have the buyback available and Empire looking to force at least one of them out. Nyx Assassin up in 20, so I don't know whether he wants to buy back Tide Hunter. Sees the perk, he might actually find the kill. First staff. Not going to be in time, and Puck just blinks himself away, gets the TP back to the fountain. Meanwhile, the T3 has gone down, the rack's being worked on by FN and Silent. Puck comes in, he gets the Silent shifts, and the Lincoln Sphere's going to be popped, but there's going to be the Boros Strike, and now the right clicks, it's going to be Silent that picks that kill up. And FN's just doing so much damage with that Desolator. Move themselves, Vendetta comes in the right clicks but he gets a refraction off, his mana's going to be burned and the hook because of the disruption misses! 
a little bit of miscommunication there. FM pops the BKB, stands, right clicks that Kirk down, finds the kill, and now the chase is on. Do they want to carry on going for this? Medusa TP into the front lines, Dream Call. Only on to Yoki that's not going to ravage for the next 53. But no clock for 36. Bottom racks are down. An Empire. Roshan, two minutes before he's back up. I'll take your tribute. So silent. Can I be a Monkey King bar? Medusa. Going towards the butterfly, so not actually picking up that Manta style as far as I can see. Nothing on the courier now. Agnar gonna be TPing towards the shrine, gonna be TPing towards maybe his death as Yoki spots him out. The trap not even gonna be popped as the burrow strike comes through. There's gonna be the active burn, pops a blade mail, but trap, is it gonna be popped? They're gonna try and secure the kill with this, they do. And FN takes it with the tick damage. She did go for the plus 200 Sionic trap damage because that is just great. Doesn't really need the 7 armor. There's gonna be the stone gaze pop pretty early. But Winter's Curse. Now the Burrow Strike comes through the disruption. Gonna be keeping him safe for now, but the epicenter channel 3 heroes rage exists. This is just gonna be an absolute slaughter. And for once, the hero that gets called Embrace does not end up dying. Yet. Under shock, got the Dream Call available. Gonna be spotted out by Silent. Gets the phase shift, blinks himself forward. Maposhka, Lincoln Sphere, gonna be popped. Is he gonna be able to turn this around with a Burrow Strike? The phase shift though, and it looks like Under Shock is gonna be able to get himself away. Maposhka still in the mid lane. Maybe an orb comes through, but Under Shock needs to be careful because there's still five heroes. Blink, there's the Burrow Strike, and now the Gush, the takedown Under Shock. Down for 83. Arctic Burn, Ragex does need to be careful, already bought back. So Yoki. Yeah, the Mystic Snake comes out, there's gonna be a Burrow Strike though, onto the Medusa, the hook comes in and Yoki just shrugs it off, he's got the... There is gonna be the... And Yoki trying to do whatever he can. It's going to be FN with the double kill so far. Winter's Curse comes out onto the next assassin. FN got himself a triple kill. Is he going to be able to go for at least... Ah, it doesn't matter. As the disconnect, the GG comes out. So Empire, take game one, 29-59, just under the 30 minute mark. Okay, so though... This is going to be game one, it is a best of three, so Double Damage and do have the chance to bring it back to a three game series in the next match. I know there was a couple of technical issues, but hopefully you've enjoyed the cast anyway. I'm going to, going to be jumping into the second game pretty soon, but I've been Roman Roll Gaming, and I hope you're sticking around for the second game. I'll see you soon.